Good morning. It's a very early morning here in Boise. I uh, just got to the gym now after I've had my uh, pre-workout about 30 minutes ago, so it's starting to kick in. Um, it's it's going to be a back workout today. However, I don't have anything planned. Today is a completely instinctive back workout where I'm just going to go in, smell the air, feel a couple of exercises, and from the first exercise, that will dictate what I'm going to do for the second and for the third. So I can tell you what the first exercise is going to be, and that's going to be the reverse pull down. Uh, once I've done that, I'll see exactly how the back feels and what I'm going to do from there on in. I think I'm going to stick to machines mostly today. The last two days, I haven't had much sleep at all. So um, I don't want to do anything crazy or anything, you know, that's, you know, a huge compound movement, very heavy because, you know, I could be playing with injury there because I haven't really adequately recovered and I don't feel completely rested to go and hit any PBs or anything like that. So I think we're going to stick mainly to machines today and I'll be focusing more on the squeeze and the contraction and the range of motion and getting that mind-muscle connection more than anything. Working a little bit more on the detail as opposed to the mass and um, and see where it takes me. You know, some, occasionally I'll do these instinctive workouts. Not very often, but occasionally I do. And uh, that's what I've found has been a good way for me to continue to grow without having to deal with any injuries. So sometimes it's really good to kind of listen to your body and allow your body, your body to kind of tell your brain where to go. Uh, so, you know, we've got a bit of a maze here today and now we have to kind of play a game to navigate our way through the weights uh, room uh, to see, you know, uh, how we connect these dots today. So, um, you know, I woke up early just to make sure that I was adequately hydrated, if anything, because I find that's of utmost importance, um, just so we get good electrolyte function, good mineral balance, and uh, so we can get a good contraction throughout the muscles regardless. So, um, let's, get, let's get in there, man, and see what's up. All right. So now comes the in-caged. Here's some we prepared earlier. A nice little compartment in this blender bottle. Right, I'll start drinking that in about five minutes after we've done the first exercise. Sticking to machines today, that feels heavy. Now, even though we're doing warm ups here, you'll notice that I'm coming forward and my body is swinging back, kind of like a pendulum. Now, it looks like it's, you know, I'm cheating. I'm getting a little momentum out of this movement. I wouldn't say it's so much cheating as that's how I like to get my full range of motion. So, instead of straightening the arms at the top, I keep them slightly bent because any further than that, I'm at full stretch. So if I straighten my arms, it's only going to be bicep flexion. I'm going to change uh, attachments here. This is a little bit short. And I find if you have like an easy bar, an angled bar, it's a much more, it's a more natural position for your hands. So if you just stand there with your arms straight, they're more natural in that position, other than that, turn it right round which would have to be on a straight bar. And that goes for barbell curls, that goes for pretty much anything. It's much easier on the wrists, but more so the elbows, if your hands are in that position, as opposed to bringing it right out. Especially as you get bigger and as you get wider, it gets a lot harder for you to turn and supinate your hands on a bar. What I want to do is try to stretch out the lats as much as possible by leaning forward to accentuate that stretch and then I'll lean back a little bit so I don't have to bring in too much arm flexion to bring it to my chest, coming straight down. I kind of bring it more down, such as a pullover movement, just to really isolate the lats a little bit more without bringing in too much biceps. Try to wear straps if you can, because that time under tension will put a lot of stress and load onto your, ha uh, onto your forearms, onto your grip, which you don't want. You want all the force and load placed upon the back. So just think of your hands as just hooks, just hanging there. 
So we've got 12 repetitions from that then. For that sort of weight, that's very, very hard. Um, normally I would go a lot heavier than that and do more repetitions. So I'm definitely feeling a lot weaker today than I usually would. So I instinctively adapt now by sticking to these sort of weights, working on the form, working on the contraction, the squeeze of the muscle, and sticking to more machines. Felt good to go heavier this time, and I feel like comfortable doing that on a machine. Just increasing the rest periods a little bit longer than what I normally would, just to ensure that I can adequately recover, because like I said, the body feels a little bit exhausted anyway. And if it does, I'm gonna give it a little bit more rest in between sets and go a little bit heavier because I'm on a machine and I can do so without the risk of injury, if that makes sense. done three sets of that, three working sets, probably did about six sets in total with the warm-ups. Uh, I felt good. So this is telling me to do another rowing movement now, another pulling sort of movement on a machine. So I think I may move to the hammer machine over yonder now. What I've just been thinking now over the past almost years just thinking of the pump get the pump 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 keep blowing it up keep increasing the fullness and the density and the separation of the muscle so i just want to keep getting the blood flow into the area so i i've changed everything in regards to moving towards that way of thinking to my supplementation more than anything making sure that i'm taking supplements that are increasing blood flow the whole time making sure that i take a pre-workout and my intro every workout to ensure that I'm getting a good blood vasodilation and also on my non-training days I still take about 8 to 10 grams of citrulline to ensure the blood is always flowing to the muscles, always flowing to the muscles so it's that much easier for those capillaries and the veins to keep feeding, keep feeding. First set done, now what you'll notice, that's my breath. Some of my sets are gonna differ from other sets. So this set was much of pause and contraction and squeeze, making sure that I didn't use any other assisting muscles, because if I couldn't hold it there, I would have used some other assisting muscles to uh, get the weight down. But on the next set, I'm gonna use more momentum and go heavier, so I can concentrate a little bit more on explosiveness of the movement uh, but I'd only recommend that you do this after one or two strict sets just to make sure you get a better neuromuscular contraction it feels more magnified you know you can really feel every portion of the back being contracted so then when we go heavier it's kind of a little bit more isolated already and pre fatigue so you know exactly what you should be feeling for so uh, that's what I'd, I'd only recommend that you do these heavy sets like this with a little bit of momentum, a little bit of control cheating after you've done a couple of real tough isolated sets. After I did the heavy set then, I think I did about 10, 12 reps to failure. Uh, my body just told me then, continue going and you've got more. So that's when I thought, okay, let's do a drop set. And I only knew that when I actually finished the set. Uh, so sometimes, you know, you don't have a plan that you stick to. Your body kind of tells you what that plan is as you go along. And uh, 
I think I got like about six extra reps. So a good six extra reps that I wouldn't have normally got. And uh, you'll notice that I didn't strap up then when I did the drop set, there's no need to. My back was already pre-fatigued. I knew I wouldn't be holding on to these handles for that long. So there's no need to strap up then. And then at the end of the set, I just contracted just to make sure that I continue to get a better mind-muscle connection all the time. So that's what I'm trying to think of. And that's the load that I'm trying to place upon the lat as I'm performing the exercise. So the more that I can do that, the more I can possibly get away with doing less weight, but applying as much tension through the mind, if that makes sense. As weird as it may sound, it feels like I don't need to do another set on here. I've done two sets. I feel like my lats are really pumped and they're engorged and they're kind of broken down. So I feel like I want to go on to something else now to hit another portion of the back. So I'm going to go on to a rowing movement now. I'm going to go to the cable rows here with a wide grip up high to really target the upper traps or middle portion of the upper tra traps, not right up here, but between the shoulder blades. Now you'll notice wherever the elbows point, that's where you're working on your back. So if I was coming down here, I'd be working a little bit lower down the back. If I come up here, I'm working straight across the midline of the shoulder blades. Now you're not going to be able to go as heavy when doing that because you're going to get less involvement of the lats. It's going to be more so your traps. So your traps obviously being a, a primary focus, a primary mover, you're not going to go as heavy, so I'm not going that heavy. I'm just making sure that I come up, get a good squeeze contraction, imagining there's a fist between my shoulder blades that I'm trying to cover and then reveal. And uh, towards the end, you'll notice that I did a couple of rest pause reps there when I couldn't do any more. I just laid back for a couple of seconds and punished out a couple more. And you'll notice a little bit of lower back movement uh, from me today. Today I'm not going to be doing deadlifts, so I don't want to do anything that involves real heavy compound movements. I've been doing some heavy deadlifts as of late, but I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm going to change things up. So that makes me focus a little bit more on doing a little bit of lower back movements whilst I'm performing this, this, this exercise as well, so I still get a little bit of involvement and fatigue from the lumbar, the erector, of the of the speed aside the spine. Another reason why you can't go as heavy on this movement is because we're using a very rock wide grip. If we were going close grip, we'd use more bicep flexion. The arms would bend more. But because we're going wide, we don't get as much flexion, so we don't get as much assistance or we don't get a spot from the biceps. <coughs> Okay, that's it, I'm done on there. Now for the final exercise, I'm gonna do a super set. And you just saw a little portion of there, I was just warming up the lower back a little bit for what's gonna come. All right, so I'm gonna go straight from this deadlift for the cable onto the shrug machine. So I'm gonna take a slightly closer grip now, don't need to go so wide. As Ronnie would say, I'm going to do like a cable deadlift on this machine here. As I said, I don't want to do anything crazy with the free weights and stack up shitload of plates and possibly injure myself because I don't feel adequately recovered from my lack of sleep last couple of days. And it's early morning. I don't feel like my body's woken up adequately for anything crazy. So I'm gonna do a superset on this machine for the lower back and do a completely different muscle group that isn't gonna be involved at all with this movement. And that's gonna be shrugs over here on the, on the machine, the hammer machine. So it's like two spectrums of the back, the very top and the very bottom. Funnily enough, when I picked this weight up, I thought, oh, this is way too easy, it's way too light. 
But then about five, six reps in, I started to struggle. I felt light picking it up. Then I felt really heavy hitting the shrug. So I think I only did, I don't know, maybe 14, 15 repetitions. And with that weight, well, how it felt, it felt like I should have got more. But anyway, it is what it is. My body doesn't know, or my muscles doesn't know what weight is written on those plates. Only knows failure, so I reach failure, that's the main thing. This is the only place in the world where you have to fail to succeed. I think I did about the same then, about 10 or 12 reps on a deadlift. <coughs> I did 12 on the shrugs. Totally fatigued, totally broken down. And as I said, this workout's very instinctive, where I'm connecting the dots as my body tells me to, and I'm navigating this maze based on the instincts. And now my instincts are telling me after only two sets to failure on that last superset, that's it. Back is done, that's enough. Oh. Playing my attack, all the time he's gonna